Ahoy and welcome to this narrowboat adventure. So this video is about crayfishing as I have hinted in a couple of other videos I've been doing. I recently applied to the Environment Agency and received my crayfishing license. Um, you don't need a license if you fish with a hook and line I believe but because I'm using crayfish nets I do have to apply for a license. Um, I just wrote a detailed um, uh, a detailed information in the application which can be found online I'll leave a link in the web for the website below about where exactly I was going to be fishing and I didn't really know so I wrote the furthest possible point I thought I might get on this trip which was Peterborough which we didn't make it to and I started from the very beginning of the trip which was Uxbridge and I got granted a license for the entire way so I was pretty happy about that and then they send you a letter um, it took about two weeks saying that I had the license and they um, posted me some little cards to attach to the um, traps that I'm using and that is what I have had on there. Um, so the traps have to be certain sizes and things like that. Um, my partner bought the traps for me and very kindly made sure they were the right sizes um, and I can completely understand why you get a leaflet with it mentioning things like uh, accidentally trapping and drowning uh, otters and and things like that um, and I'm not surprised because we have actually caught quite a lot of um, of uh, fish small fish by mistake so we have of course thrown them back in because the, when you see the traps in a second you'll see um, basically the way that it works is it's a large net tube and then it comes into a small opening that the crayfish goes into they fall down into the tube and they can't get out again. Um, we've been using uh, either like cat food, uh, tin sardines or chorizo uh, with success more depending on the place rather than the bait that we've used. So um, what I want to do now is pull up the crayfish nets that we have here and hopefully I'll have caught some and then I'm going to cook them with you. So that's the license card that I was sent. I had one for each of my three traps. This is the trap. As you can see, there's the tubes at each end. Um, the bit hanging down in the middle is the bait. Um, there are three crayfish at the bottom and a zip in the middle to let them out. Um, so I'm just getting them out now. Um, I'm going to use the Ramiers technique and... Um, dispatch them straight away so if you'd like to skip that you're probably going to want to skip ahead to about four minutes 20. Um, so crayfish actually are an invasive species. Uh, the signal crayfish which you're allowed to trap um, were brought over from America and they carry a plague that actually kills off our invasive species. So you can see I'm turning the crayfish over to check that the underside of their claws is red. I'll talk more about um, how you know the difference in a moment but yeah so the Ramirez technique is to just pop the knife down the back of their neck there there's a really good video if you search Ramirez and crayfish um, and then you click the center section of the tail to each side it's more difficult than he makes it look um, you can pull the full intestine and their uh, spinal column right out um, so you can see there that that's the uh, the poop um, we had experimented with keeping them in water over a couple of days but found that that actually killed some of the crayfish so we just wash them off with water a few times and then eat them straight away. So you can see the underside of the claws is red and the body is quite smooth and that's how you know that they are the signal crayfish because with the uh, the native crayfish they have white claws and also their body is quite um, pointy. Um, there's a lot of other information that you can find with a quick Google search. So here I'm just cooking them. I sped it up to about a thousand times the speed. So it does look like they're a bit more wiggly than they actually were. Um, although they do stay a little wiggly after you kill them. That's just because they have a very simple nervous system. It's like a chicken. Um, so yeah, and they turn red pretty quickly once you start cooking them. And here are my three done ones. So I'm going to start taking out the meat. It's very much like a very small lobster. Um, so you're just going to want to pull off the tail. Some people like to sit, suck the juice out of the heads. That's not something I really do. Um, and 
the claws of course you're going to want to keep as well you can get a bit of meat out of the arms of the claws too um so yeah let's get on with this um it's pretty much like doing a prawn when you want to take the meat out of the tail you're just going to sort of click the sides a little bit uh to be, make sure that you can get in and then you're going to just pull off the um the armor i suppose so this particular one had like a sort of an extra red skin underneath this does happen with some of them but not all of them and it actually makes it a lot easier to get the meat out um so yeah you just don't want to eat the red skin <laughs> and um, i'm speeding up the arms because they are a little bit fiddly and you don't get a huge amount of meat out of them but if you're going to do it you might as well eat all that you can and um, as I say, it's very much as you would with a lobster. Yum. I can't wait to eat these. Um... A friend of mine actually caught 19 in Broxbourne, so up the River Lee is the next place I'd like to get a licence to crayfish. And uh, yeah, so the claws you just want to do is the same as you would really. You're going to use a knife or something to crack open the shell and then just grab out the meat from there. So you can see our second crayfish in has only got one arm. He's obviously been in a fight or something and lost one of his arms, which is a shame for us because that means a bit less meat. But there you go. Um, so in a minute you'll see all of the meat from all of the crayfish all together and so this is much more of a starter portion I think 19 would be a good amount Yum. one thing I should note is that once you catch crayfish you're not allowed to put them back into the water because they carry this plague and um, it's good practice that once you've caught some in a particular area if we're moving to a next area we leave the crayfish nets to dry for 24 hours before we put them back into the water thank you very much for watching and if you would like to you can um, let me know in the comments if you've ever caught your own dinner um, particularly if it's like crayfishing fish um, I'd really like to go sea fishing sometime um, you can check me out over on Facebook if you prefer to get a notification of new videos there. You can join us on this narrowboat adventure anytime you like by clicking subscribe. And, and I'd like to say a great big thank you to Mark Buller for your patron sponsorship. You rock and I'm going to get a key ring out to you in the mail very soon. Uh, if you'd like to as well, I have got a podcast now, a narrowboating podcast called This sorry, called Miss Narrowboat Adventure with my good friend Marlies, who you may remember from uh, the Pump Out video. Uh, we talk about adventuring, narrowboating and being missuses. So you can check that out. I'll put links in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye!